Welcome in everybody to another episode of the DNVR Rapids podcast. We are presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. It's America's number one sportsbook. Download the app. Use promo code DNVR when you sign up. Fellas, it's show day. It's Thursday. It's perfect out. We're coming off a somewhat positive result. It's a positive draw. Positive draw. We're feeling good. Vibes are in, headed in the right direction. Maybe. Let's find out. Joining me, Super Yaya. Hello. Make it short and sweet today. That's it? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> You're not going to say where your vibes are at? <laughs> where else could they be? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> They're vibing, I guess. <laughs> All right. <laughs> also joining me, Downtown Dwayne Brown. Hi. My vibes are good. I love that. I'm ready to talk rapids. Let's go. We got a uh, we got a lot to talk about today. Um, we have LAFC coming to town this weekend. We got the DNVR Rapids takeover for that. Um, obviously, a very strong home team. We're going to dig into sort of the why and the how and the who's and the what's with that. But first, we got to talk about the man of the match from this past weekend. The most expensive player on the team, the big name acquisition, the designated player, Kevin Cabral. Come Guys, on. I want, I just kind of want to get your initial, I mean, we know your initial things, right? Because we all, we did emergency shows, we did season previews, we've talked about them a whole bunch, but we haven't talked, I mean, we talked after the game, but we haven't, we haven't really dug into how we're feeling about him right now. Yeah, yeah, where are you at with Cabral? It's so funny because um, I'm about to do the thing that I flame uh, Henry on the Broncos podcast uh-huh. on constantly. That uh, bringing up the Kansas City Chiefs for no reason. Okay. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Kevin Cabral has the initials KC. Okay. Which makes puts me a little bit lower on him than he should be. <laughs> just because of the Chiefs <laughs> connection? Just because of the Chiefs connection. It's really dumb. Terrible. And terrible. it makes no reason. It makes no sense at all. <laughs> yeah. Why? But just wanted to put that out there. But, uh, dude, I'm hot. I'm so iffy on Cabral right now. Sure. He did give us the moment, but he also didn't start. Right. He didn't. And... He is making the right runs, I guess. But to me, it's like, why aren't you starting? Is it a Frazier thing? Is it a you thing? Is it a Porik thing? Right. Why aren't you there yet? So, like, my vibes with Cabral, I think it's when you get to the hospital. Because you know you're going to feel instant relief when you get to the hospital, but you're still in pain. Got it. Kind of. Yeah. Interesting. It's kind of that. Dwayne, are you at hospital some vibes? W- weird Cabral <laughs> takes today from Yaya. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm all over the place. Emotionally, I am wrecked. <laughs> Are you okay? Do we have to have a real conversation off air, Yaya? Um, uh, that might be a therapist talk. <laughs> uh, Dwayne, where are you at with Cabal? I, He's I'm, your guy. You've I'm been not riding in the hard. hospital. I'm not in Kansas City. Uh, <laughs> I'm in a hospital I, in Kansas City. <laughs> I am on the Cabral train. Uh, uh-huh. And I'll say it because of this. Th- this one thing, again, watching that replay of the goal is watching his intelligence to shift from where he was twice to get into position for Barrios to be able to get that ball back to him, knowing that Barrios was going to be right up at the line and a last minute bat angle pass back. Um, Saw it coming, um, made a heads up play, a smart play. um, And, you know, a lot of times we don't see that in our in our forwards too much because right. there's just not enough time. Um, so to see someone see that, make that adjustment twice, get in and finish it off, uh, was very hopeful um, for me. So yeah, uh, I'm still feeling good about it. Sure. Um, Ellis, could you pull up the uh, the graphic there for us? Um, so I got two profiles here. This is both Kevin Cabral, and this is him playing. Well, I'm not going to say which one is which. It's him playing winger and him playing forward. Over the last 365 days, this is his profile. I can get into some of the highlights, but clearly, one, very green. A lot of high numbers. One, up and down, mostly not great. If you had to guess which one is which, which side is he clearly a ton more productive at? Which position? I know. So you I'm know because I, I know, sent you yeah. the graphic to make. Yeah. What about yeah, you? Yeah, that's a doing. I, I don't know. Also, I don't like things that are related to math or numbers or charts. So this is a very scary graphic for me. Um, I'm going to go with the one with more green. Yeah. 
being at the winger position. Incorrect. Da, 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 da. He has been far more productive. You are now off the show. <laughs> Sorry, goodbye. That's You've been it. voted off. It's, it's been, been really fun. fun. I appreciate um, you guys having me on the we show. We still expect a lot of posters and graphics. Um, no, okay. So, <laughs> You're still working, just not for us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so if you're looking at him as a striker, right, the good stuff, 85th percentile or higher in the last 365 days, right? 85th percentile or higher in the following categories. Expected assists, pretty nice. Good pass. When he's the striker, he's distributing. Passes attempted, he's in the 92nd. Pass completion percentage, he's pretty high. Progressive carries, he's the 94th, so that's 10 feet. That's a ball in the attacking third. He progressed 10 feet towards the goal. That's a nice stat as a striker. Uh, successful take-ons, progressive passes received. He's the 98th percentile in progressive passes received when he's a striker. Which means he's getting himself in, in the most dangerous position possible at almost the best rate you possibly can. Um, he is 95th in tackles, 95th percentile in tackles, and also above the 85th in interceptions and blocks. Um, first percentile, though, in non-penalty goals. That's, that's the one thing I was going to say. The ones that matter to me the most on this is the um, progressive passes oh, yeah. and the uh, expected goals. He has you a higher can pull that expected. Down now if you want yeah, he has the higher expected goals in um when it comes to him being a winger, and he yeah. has a seventy eight percentile when it comes to be progressive passes, which as a winger that's where you're being asked for the most. Right. So that's what I kind of rather have, honestly. So I'm more on that side of it than I am on. I rather I still rather him on the winger because when you are a striker, you're putting yourself in different positions. You're giving the ball, you're getting the ball a lot more, sure. so you're getting that chance to create down the middle sure. and have those things. You can take the graphic down, Alyssa. We're good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, the one thing about Cabral, there's also just you got to see him play. It's not just him about the advanced stats. Sure. It it just paints a nice picture. And when you see him play the la the first two games when we saw him start against San Jose, he didn't look it. Mm -mm. He looked slow. He looked like he wasn't getting in the right positions. And he wasn't making the last-minute runs that you immediately saw when J. Lou came on. Yeah. So who's the real Cabral? Right. Is it, he was playing striker that time. He was playing a double striker. So why wasn't he able to get those same runs or get all those right. fancy things going? To me, with him, it's more of a mental thing where he has to get ready, be prepared. Sure. He has to find some dog in him, If I feel like. Yeah, I feel so. I feel like that's about accurate. Um, as a winger, ninth percentile in progressive passes completed. Not great. Not great. Not great if your winger is not getting the ball into areas where your strikers, your tens, can do something with it, <laughs> right? Um, I don't know. To me, he's looked, like you said, he's looked best off the bench as the striker. Right? Like, is that his role? Is he the super sub in offense? Is he start above, Ru like, with Rubio behind him, like we saw last year, kind of in the Zardis role? Like, what, where does he fit? Clearly, you want him in that more attacking role just based on the way he plays, but you still have to factor in Rubio come back. Yeah, be getting minutes. That's why he needs yeah. to be elite at winger. Right. Because you don't got to be elite. But, he, but he isn't. But you, should, but that's the thing. <laughs> He's you like got a lead at striker. Then maybe the rapid scouter wrong because that you know they who don't played well at winger. What what what? You know who played well at winger? Barrios. Yappy. Yappy. Actually, he did. He, did. he played well. So I, what again, if we flip flop? I wouldn't flip flop. That's interesting. I, but, but you have it's one interesting guy because who the played. profile, and I haven't even the physical about profile. That. Like yeah. no, no. Like I see what you're saying. Like. <laughs> you have a huge guy in Yappy. Put him in front of Rubio. Cabral's fast as hell and good with the ball. Just feet. put him on the wing. But then you look at how they're playing. It just like completely does not evoke what the eye test is telling you. Well, it should be. And that's what's frustrating. Maybe the Rapids got it wrong. And it's completely possible. And I still believe in Cabral. I still think he's going to be the guy. I still think he's going to be a good player. But maybe it's not a right fit for this team. Oh, God, that and sucks. And it sucks. It's only four. It's only, also, it's, also it's only five games in. So, like, these are <laughs> me. I'm, I'm personally making huge leaps right. on five games that I've seen, and he's only played, like, what, 40 minutes? 40 yeah. minutes when he didn't start that game against San Jose? Right. So maybe, what, he's played 100 minutes at most? 150? That's yeah, no. I mean, I could find it real yeah, fast. Like, but, um, and that's my He's thing. played 128 minutes. Five, in over five matches. So I'm yeah. making some big conclusions on five games in only 158 minutes. Right. But the ideal place for him to play on this team would be as a winger 
to, because uh, Frazier likes playing through the wingers. Frazier likes going through the wings. So what are what is he? What are you going to do with him at that point? I don't know, Dwayne. Where do you where are you at? where are you falling falling on this? Um, I'm going to put people where they play their best, not where I want them to play. So if if I see that Cabral is playing really well um, and his numbers are good at striker, then I'm going to put him striker and and. But that doesn't mean I want to bench Yappy unless I want to have one sub off for the other. But if I want them both on the pitch, then I then I bump Yappy out to winger, knowing that he plays that we've seen him play well there, and I'm gonna go with that. What if you did a uh, Ronan back to the six, Bassett Rubio together, and then a Yappy and Cabral up top, and then they can kind of slide to you know. Cabral can drift left, Yappy can drift right where he look pretty comfortable. They can both kind of be in the edges of the box because the one thing he does great as a winger is, and it's his most elite stat as a winger for Cabral is that he um, has is 94th percentile in touches in the penalty area. So if he is positioned out there, he does get inside more than most wingers can. So I'm just wondering if that kind of satisfies both worlds. It's like two up top. I think I know what you're saying. You're trying to go with the back five. It's a three, four, yeah. three. And two, your two or like a five, are, three, two kind of. Yeah, so at yeah. that point, you got to take out Bassett or Max, who both been balling, because then you need the double sure, pivot. But I would rather have Rubio than either one of those two. True. But you also need a defensive midfielder, and Ronan can't do it by himself. You need. We right, saw that's this why you have the five game. back, right? But the back five also didn't work when you were doing it the other That's way. That's true. You're right. And especially no, you're right. now that you don't got Jack, you need two players to do the job of one. And I think Ronan could do it a lot better. Right. But he's still going to need a little bit of help on the defensive and the aggressive part of it. It's tough. So it's like, tough. I see what you're doing. You're doing a 3-4-3, yeah. three, three, and your 10 is going to be uh exact same lineup as last time. But instead of Ronan being that 10, you got Rubio being your 10. Correct. Got Cabral and Yappy up there. And maybe the answer to that is you put Bassett as your double pivot and then but you let him drift out left or right and then Keegan can come in and help in and be the double pivot when needed. Yep. Or let Danny come in and, in, and be a uh, double p- pivot when needed and you can convert to a back four. So it's I can see what you're thinking and I see what you mean. It's just going to need a lot of commitment from the players to yep. be able to cover for, for each other at that point. Which... You know, so far, camaraderie seems up after the, you know, they obviously devastating Jack Price injury on the field. So we'll see. We'll see what they can do. It's an interesting problem to have, right? Like, oh, man, we have this guy who profiles very well in this role, but we also have these two guys who also profile very well in this role. Maybe just put all three of them in that role and see what happens. Like, <laughs> I'm also just not very convinced that Cabral as a striker. I mean, I don't think I am either, but I'm yeah. more convinced of him as a striker than I am as a winger. And maybe that's a problem. That's completely reasonable, and right? Like yeah. maybe that isn't a good thing that I think that. Yeah, it, it, again, it's a reasonable thing to think, though. Again, my thing is you need more winger help than you need striker help, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, maybe there's a conversation for next year if Rubio doesn't come back, and or maybe or if and Yappy leaves. Both, jeez. Uh, but again, to me, it's a lot more. You have to bring in another striker, whether that be a DP or not. I don't care. Just another striker. And then uh, you need to let Cabral kick on the wings and let him become an inverted winger. Let him come in if needed, you know? Sure. Yeah. Who knows? We'll see. It's so unlikely that Frazier goes away from this five back from here, right? Yeah. And it really just takes away one option, one one big position to play with up top. Um which is a bummer because I think that would be the spot that Cabral would play the most would be that extra spot that's taken up by the five back. Um, but at this point, the four back, I don't think you can go back to it anytime soon. So uh, interesting problem to have. We'll definitely get some more insight into that tomorrow at practice when you can kind of see who's playing with starters and who's not. And definitely on Saturday, first big chance home game. Hopefully he's involved. Um all right, well, speaking of that home game, let's dive into the LAFC game. But first, we got to talk about the homies at Shady Rays. Uh, take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. 
Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn, durable frames, and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. That's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, just like Susie Hunter, they told us they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. Uh, I got the uh, the camo colored tortoise shell. Yep, those are banging. I love. Them. I wear them all the time, and they're not even prescription, so I, it's really bad for me to be probably be wearing them, and I don't care because they're so dope. Um, together with their customers, Shady Rays is providing uh, much needed support to nonprofit partners across the U.S. through Shady Rays Impact, from building play sets for pediatric cancer patients to providing young adults with the MLS with outdoor adventures. Of a lifetime, or with MS, I'm sorry, I said MLS, I'm just so used to talking about this league. Uh, with MS, the Outdoor Adventure of a Lifetime, Shady Rays is making an impact in your community and others like it now and for years to come. If you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team has your back. You know who else we got to talk about? New sponsor alert. You ready for this one? I am excited. Can't wait. Fubo! Fubo, Fubo TV. I know Yaya was itching for Fubo. You wanted to get that those Mexico games in the World Baseball Classic. I did. Also, uh, they have a Tu de N, so I get to watch uh, the Liga Mexi. What Tu de N? Tu de N. What's so, that? Tu de N is like the Mexican ESPN. Oh, cool. Four letter broadcast. Sorry. Sure, sure, sure. I'm cool with sponsoring Tu de N because they're Mexican. T U D N. Yeah, T U D two. Two for the white folks. Yeah. yeah, got it. <laughs> I that don't makes know what way it, more I, sense. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what it means. But <laughs> it, for those of you who look at logos, um, it's the one that says T-U-D-N. It's literally that simple. <laughs> you know how ESPN has like the four letters? And it's like, that's do the Okay, it makes sense. Uh, 140 plus live channels, sports shows, movies, and news. Stream live TV from any device. Watch the most Colorado sports for the lowest price. Start watching immediately with a seven-day free trial. No contract, no cable, no hassle. Just sign up and start watching. A thousand hours of cloud DVR included at no extra charge. Watch your local teams while traveling. Um, there is the Frozen Four this week on ESPN and all of its uh, various, uh, what do you call them? Subsidies? No. Other t other channels. Yeah. The ones that fall under the umbrella. Um, you can watch the Nuggets or the Avs on Altitude Sports with Fubo. How many of you were... I rate at not getting to watch the Avs make their run to the Stanley yeah, Cup last year. <laughs> last year. Yeah. Uh, or it's the huge. Nuggets that uh, have a two time back to back MVP player and should be three time for that matter. <laughs> um, man, I'm telling you, I, I so I used Fubo the other night for the first time. So impressed. And I used to work in for another very large TV company and was super impressed with oh, the UI shit. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just being able to watch the Nuggets yeah. live was so awesome. Use the link in the description. Sign up for 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. That is FuboTV.com slash DNVR. You have 15% off. Use that QR code right down below, Dwayne, right down there, over there. Um, right by Dwayne's feet. Could right, be saying something yeah, else? Right near his cool kicks. Yeah. Um, also, I I, find, I was laughing because I found it so funny. It took us that long to bring up the Nuggets or Avalanche. We yeah. were talking about through then in the Frozen Four. <laughs> hey, the look, Nuggets even came up. We give the people what they like, want. There's there's look, people are talking about it, man. Get the people going. Also, here on the DNVR Rapids podcast, Ryder gets it. Ryder gets it. <laughs> I also love that uh, Kevin called it Tude in. <laughs> Tude in. That's what I want to call it. All right. Um, definitely use uh, if you don't have a streaming option for television, or you don't want a cable box. Fubo, great, great job. Also, real quick, um, before we continue, give us a like. It really helps us. We, we beg you guys every time. that like. So please, please give us likes. It makes my self-esteem feel a lot better. It might help with my therapist. Dude, later. the Buff Show just got like 230 likes right before us. Can we get ten, Can we get 10 more? Can we get to 23? Can we literally do 10% of what those guys do? Um, please, if you're in here and you're watching, hit that like. It goes a long way. Um. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, LAFC. Lafk. 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 Uh, they are coming into town. <laughs> That's the new channel, Lafka. Uh, 
I'm not going to say they like sh- they like definitely picked up where they left off, but it was close. I think they might yeah. be better than last they year. They might be better than last year. Obviously, they trailed the red hot St. Louis City. Boo. I don't know. I can't believe it. They're fun. Yeah, I think it's fun. It is fun. It's fun. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, I already put myself in a mentality that I know is going to become a rivalry. Sure. I love that. It's not even um, nothing against them. I just know what it's going to be. Last year against LAFC, season opening loss, 3 nothing. You had an Acosta start. You had, um, I think, Mac. Did Mac start in that game, too? Uh, I think Mac was part of that team. So it was Max, Price, and Acosta midfield. It was a rough. It was 3 nothing, and it was like an avalanche in the second half. Once it started, it, it got ugly quick. Uh, the return fixture at home, a 2 nothing win. Two penalties called by Ted Uncle, the homie. Ted uh, Uncle. Put, put both Giazzi Zardes and Diego Rubio at the spot to get the 2 nothing win. One of the highlights of the season last year, honestly. That game is so funny because I was rewatching the highlights yeah. the other day. <laughs> and um, both penalties were deserved. Oh, for sure. Uh, but it could have been a lot a lot bigger yep. win for the Rapids because they had opportunity after opportunity. But if you want to quantify what the Rapids season was last year, that's what it was. A lot of craziness going on. A lot of missed opportunities. Missed opportunities. And I think this team especially, the margin of error on missed opportunities is far slimmer. Yep. There's no winning 2-0 this week. If you miss your opportunities, I don't think you're winning 2 0, period. I think you have to win. I think you need three goals to win this game at home. Three goals? For the Rapids to win? For the Rapids to get three points, I think you need three goals. See, I think you only need one. You think you can win one nothing this weekend? I think you're going to have a clean sheet, huh? I, I don't think so, but I think that's all you need. I, I think that if you get the first goal, well, yeah, if, just okay, goal if you score first, sure, <laughs> well, I mean, sure, sure. If you're winning one, no, you're scoring <laughs> yeah. first no matter what. No, I know, but I'm <laughs> saying like, if you you're saying if it enough. goes up 1-0, they can just pack it back and... They have, I think, the... They have they the personnel have, for it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. they're just big. Again, nothing against is LAFC. I think they're the best team in the league. I think that's, that's again, that's statement. That's, <laughs> yes. that's putting them up against um, <laughs> Philly. That's putting them up against St. Louis, putting them up against Seattle. Yeah. That's anybody. I think LAFC is the best team in the league. I think so. And uh, just talent-wise, the way they're still try- they're still being able to navigate through Champions League, yeah. navigate the, uh, the actual league, yeah. I think it's beyond anybody has been able to do. Because even last year when Seattle went all the way, yeah, they struggled in the uh, league play. LAFC did not struggle. They just came out and took care of business exactly that's why i'm like that's yeah. why i think lafc is just like hands down the better team and i think if they score first it's gonna get ugly yes because lafc is really good correct you got a Paco, <laughs> you got uh buanga you got carlos vela then you got the golden boy uh the golden boy finalist from last year buick who's also a baller then you got Ile, who is basically just jack price a little bit less talented not as good but he does have that kind of um <laughs> That dog, kind of oh, that leadership, dude. that leadership. That whole that team you, has leadership and dog. And then Up you look at the defense and you got Cellini, you Long. got Aaron Long. He's been awesome. And their biggest weakness in that whole team is the goalkeeper. So if you get shots on goal, there's a good chance you can get one by him because he is very prone to mistakes. If, if you get shots on goal, Dwayne, did you hear that? If, it's a big, fat, stinky if. We got a lot of sh- shots off last week. Last week, 18 shots. Yeah. You know, and again, I think the so Rapids I mean, are maybe capable. that if is not as big as, as we thought it was. It, I think it's a big... On I think, a much worse defense. <laughs> I was about to say, I think it's a big if. Because Austin was, is a bad defense. Yeah, it is this a bad defense. They, have, they had maybe potentially Maybe they're elite. bad. Maybe they had yeah. some injuries. Yeah. Correct. LAFC doesn't have any of that. <laughs> I know. LAFC has none of that. And look, I, I, I don't think I'm going to predict a win because I don't think we can score three goals in a game. You know? That's like I think that's a huge ask at this point. You know what I will predict? A good time. There will be a good time. <laughs> we'll get into that for sure. Dwayne, like where is your head at in this game? Are you are you just excited for the takeover basically? Well, I, well, yeah, obviously. Um, cuz that's kind of where I'm at is like at least we got the takeover baby. Well, what I like about, <laughs> what I like about this about this matchup is that it is a true David and Goliath matchup. Yeah. Like it's it's the defending MLS champs versus bottom of the entire league team, you know? So uh, 
what I s the potential here is that the Rapids have nothing to lose. So I hope that Fraser comes out with, you know, whatever strategy it is, whatever he's been working on all week, um, cooking up with the squad. Um, I hope it's, it's I, don't, I don't even know what it would be, but I hope it's something spicy, something crazy that, that um, will catch them off guard. Um, and I hope the team is just like amped up and angry and just like ready to fight because it's like everybody knows their last place in the whole league and they're going against a team that really, I, I don't think anybody at LAFC thinks they're going to lose on Saturday. And I would love nothing more than the Rapids to punch them right in the mouth and like turn MLS on its head, give MLS season pass a reason to finally talk about the Rapids and for more than two seconds, you know, as a Rapids lost again, instead have to talk about, you know, really upsetting uh, the entire league right now. Like so that. Yeah. that that is what I'm watching the match for on Saturday, in addition to everything else. But this is a chance for us as fans and supporters to just go batshit crazy in the stadium yeah. and absolutely go nuts and 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 just be the underdog, you know, and, and go if for it. If there's ever been a team, and, you know, we've talked about this a lot with the Rapids, where this team needs to be greater than the sum of its parts, that's when this team works, right, is when all these distressed assets click, right? This team might be the actual peak of that, right? Like... There needs to be so many things that go right. And the biggest thing to make that happen starts with a strong home field, rowdy crowd in it from the jump, getting crazy, ripping the shirts off, dancing off the dev dogs. I might throw my shoe, depending how, <laughs> how drunk I get. I am planning on shoe throwing. I will not be throwing shoes or taking my shirts off. Shirts, say, shirts might come off. It's going to be 64 not, degrees on Saturday and sunny. It's gonna so be like, no awesome. matter what, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a great day. I'm also all in for um, this being a game where the Rapids can win. It's surprisingly enough because I think the defense has shown enough. To, well, they win at home. Exactly. They've shown enough that, I, in my opinion, I think they have an opportunity, at least, that it's not a complete landslide. Um, but how you said things just have to go right. I have I have faith in the defense, man. Exactly. It's, like All they need is just, one goal. It's just like some unexpected wizardry that we haven't seen yet on offense. You yeah. Know? Yeah. The like, I mean, that's the question is the you know, offense. Can you get multiple goals in a game when you only have two goals on the season? Well, okay. Sure. That's true. Only two goals on the season. Right. Like, but they went, what was it? Four, uh, three games without a goal. Correct. Three games without a goal. Now they got back to back games with a goal. Correct. What are the chances? It, it's improving little by little. The first yeah. they got a goal, but they lost. Then they got a goal and they drew. What if they get a goal and they win? What if it's just like an upward slope? It's like right, right, just kind of yeah. It was like just dip, dip before in. the rise. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I I hope you're right. I want you to be right. I do think, you know, you say eight goals in five games, but really it's four goals in four games if you take away their terrible start in Seattle, right? So it's like a if you're giving up a goal a game, you can win a lot of games. Sure, right? Yeah, for sure. You sh I mean, they just so Rubio should be back. Yappy should be back. Basically, you have everyone but Price, right? You have some people nursing some stuff. Like we're not, we're not going to get like a ninety out of Cabral, right? We're not going to get, you know. I mean, we, sh we I should want. just throw him. I, uh, honestly, if you have Cabral, you're not doing the back five, right? That's the let, yeah, because yep. you. I don't think you can play wing back because he doesn't have that sort of conditioning or right. work rate. And it's an, again, a lot of players don't have that work rate. You need. Very specific players to play the wing back positions. Uh, and I just can't see him doing that for 90 minutes or even 45 minutes. Right. So maybe it is. You have Cabral and Yappy up there, and you sit Max and, and Acosta, and you have Ronan and Bassett being your double pivot. Yeah. And that might be really fun to watch against this super offensive team. And it'd be, and we're going to go crazy for three, four goals. Like It could be goal of Palooza on imagine. Saturday. I mean, it imagine really could. He's so turned up right now, dude. The thing is that... <laughs> I mean, you know that LFC is going to be... They're, they're high insane. potential for lots of goals. Exactly. Like you it, know. it could be like a 3-4 goal affair, whether it's a 3-1 loss for the Rapids. Right, okay. Or yeah, a 2-2 yeah, two, yeah. two draw, or it could be a 4-0 a yeah. bashing, but it's going to be goals. There's, there will be goals That's scored. I think there will be goals um, if, the, if LFC scores first. I will say that. 
Cause Cause it's think an avalanche that, at that point. Yeah, yeah, I think of rapid score first. There's a good chance we get a it one no, yeah. Yeah, one, 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 one two, two oh, something like that, one yeah. one something like that. But it's gonna be a really interesting game. Does our guy Diego Rubio does he get his first goal of the season this weekend? He gets his first, second, and third hat trick. Ooh. Hat trick. I'm Did not you hear that? My, I'm not putting my money on that. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, I'll I'll wait for that on the graphic we put out every Saturday. Yeah, that's again, uh, that was completely <laughs> tongue in cheek. Sure. <laughs> no. Do you think? He, I mean, do you like his chances for one? I like his chances for one. I think the thing about Cellini is like he's slow. Uh, yeah. And think also Long isn't that fast either. No, but like, the thing with Long, he also got kicked by Rubio last year in that Red Bulls game. Oh, you're right. So. I, Again, I don't know their history, but I do think that Rubio might have something on that defense that uh, might be kind of fun to watch. Man, I think so. I, look, the only reason I'm not just writing it off completely is because they're good at home. You know, like this team can win at home. And let's get into that a little bit. Uh, but first, we got to talk about the homies, Illegal Beats. Man, Illegal Beats having a time. They just presented the Buffs spons- the, the whole Buffs podcast right before us. Now they're on. Now they're here with the Rapids homies, and not only that, they'll be coming with us. Four of them, four of the Pete's homies are coming on the five. the takeover. Five Pete's five homies are coming over on the takeover. They're doing a five aside. Homies. Let's go! <laughs> uh, all right, Illegal Pete's. This episode of the DMVR Rapids podcast is brought to you by Illegal Pete's. This March, donate by drinking its vodka for the kids. It's as easy as that. Illegal Pizza is teaming up with Tito's and Denver's Youth on Record program to help raise money for the future musicians of Colorado. Youth on Record provides underprivileged children in the Denver community with music-based strengths and skills that will give them the platform they need to accomplish their dreams. For the entire month of March, Illegal Pizza will be donating $1 to Youth on Record from every vodka fresh press sold. Stop by one of Illegal Pizza's 10 Colorado locations, order a Tito's fresh press, and know that your money is going to support Colorado's next big star. Illegal Pete's your go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer. Tip of the day. Mitch's oh, Pete's tip of the day. I didn't have one day. lined up. I didn't have one lined up. It should just be go to Illegal Pete's and drink. Go drink vodka at Pete's. That's my thing. Order whatever you want. But just make sure it <laughs> comes with a vodka fresh press. Just make sure you side. get plastic with vodka. Mitch's <laughs> <Mitch's laughs> tip. Order whatever you Order want. Order whatever you want to your heart's desire. <laughs> and and wash it down with some Tito's vodka for the kids. And if your wife or husband gets mad because you got home drunk, just say it was for the kids. It's for the kids. For the kids. You're drinking for the kids, man. And if you sleep on the couch, just remember, it's, it's for, for the kids. It's for music education. It's for the That's kids. It's so important. <laughs> I grew up with instruments. I grew up in band, and I played guitar. And I went to lessons. I did all that stuff. It's so important. And I listen to music, so it's important. <laughs> we could be listening to future kids because you went and got drunk at Illegal Pete's. So do it. Um, or, do it, or, or buy someone else one if you don't drink. It's That's fine. true, like me. I'll buy, yeah. but drink it. Anyway. I'll buy you two a bunch of vodka fresh. Passes. I don't want it. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not a vodka I'll, guy. I'll drink both of them. <laughs> I'm <laughs> but I'm a yeah, I was going to be stumbling out of Pete's this week um, because we only have until tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last day you can do it. So get down there. Um, they, they've raised a ton of money for this program. When I was there, it was every year. So I imagine it's been about like 10, 15, 20 years that they've been doing this partnership. It's really cool. Um, so make sure that you check it out. Um, all right. Back to home cooking. I, and, you know, and it, this is kind of open end. I don't really know where I want to go with this, but it's kind of why I can't write off this game this weekend, no matter how bad the team has been, is because last year, definitely 2021, so many big wins at home. So many big wins at home. The LAFC game last year, the next game, Seattle wins, right? They, dub, 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 they dub, went... Dub. <laughs> like 15 months without losing at home or something like that. 16 months without yeah. losing at home. Regular season because they did regular lose, season. Yeah. Right. But still, yeah. I mean, they went like they had like the longest record in MLS at that point. I think, I think it was in active and third longest ever or something. Like yeah. That. Like without a loss or home. something. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Like yo, I was almost reached the thirties. I think I don't remember exactly like the exact number, but my point, like not every team has like crazy home wins here. Right, like that's not true for the Broncos, especially in the last six years or so. Why are the Rapids just so, so Jackal and Hyde? What is it about? Is it literally just altitude? That'd be super boring if it was just altitude. 
to me, it is altitude, but it, it affects in a lot of different ways. To me, it's the conditioning. Sure. I think it does affect it. Like, it Thank does, you, B-Ray, 23 games. Sorry. Uh, 23. Uh, it does affect it quite a bit. It affects it quite a bit in conditioning, running around, especially because it's a huge pitch. And you're running for str- straight 45 minutes. Yeah. You don't get that those timeouts like in basketball or when the Broncos between plays. That affects it a lot. Mentally, you're coming into this game knowing I'm at that altitude. It, I'm at altitude. Yeah. See, even if you try to, as soon as you get tired, you're like, shit, altitude got me. It's in your head. Yeah, exactly. And the third reason, kind of like baseball, you know how the ball flies a little bit further? Mm-hmm. I feel like that affects a little bit too on the offensive side. A little more you, bend on the free kicks? Yeah, you get a little It'll bit be more. less bend. No, no, but you more go on the freak. No, less, not less, less, less. Right, 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 right. Less, but like less. it also far, goes a little bit farther. So like right. when you, you kick it, distance, it's a little yeah. bit harder. Oh, okay, yeah, and yeah. It's not like, Ben. No, no. You just get power. a little, yeah, a little bit more power because like your kick is flying through a lot thicker. So all yeah. those fancy pantsers, yeah, from LAFC with all their bending. Ha! <laughs> not yeah, here, Beckham. <laughs> You're not bending anything. Welcome here. to our not bendy, dry, humidity less air, where well, you're. Where your balls don't We'll bend. bend you something. I also think it's a really good point from Kevin, who just dropped that in there. I feel like a lot of teams underestimate their rapids as well. Um, I like Matthew's comment as well. Matthew. Matthew says, LAFC are a bunch of prima donnas who are used to amazing locker rooms and cushy chairs on the sideline. So when they come to Dick Sporting Goods Park, which is not those things, they get rattled and suck. I you love know, this if, take. If what that's, a take. If that's what it takes, I am all in for that. You know like, what? All in. You know what? DSG is so bad. Teams don't even want to play here. They're I just love trying it. to get out. Let's lean, let's lean into what we have. Oh like, my God. That's how I read that. You know what? You can you can have your nice wall water, your fancy that showers. so funny. Everyone's been complaining about Dick Sporting Goods Park for so long. We don't, we don't know what we have. You know what? In, in in this thing, <laughs> we have the place that no one wants and, to come play yeah. at. Literally, they do not want to play a game. It's here. a trap, man. <laughs> it's it's Admiral Akbar Stadium. That's I, all there is. I, it's a straight trap. I love that so much. Such a shitty place to play that we're just <laughs> trying to get in. And out. I love it. Altitude, I mean, look, hey, no fancy chairs. You don't get your good chairs. luck. You get a bench. <laughs> also, it's cold. <laughs> It's not going to be cold this weekend. It's going to be perfect. It might soccer. be a little chilly. By the end of the night. game, it'll be like in yeah. the low 50s. That's Actually, yeah. yeah. Low 50s could, last night, be, and it wasn't that bad. Uh, well, yeah. Like Highest 64 going into the tailgate. Let me look at that. I'll see what our low is. We so. sold out. Sold out the Rapids takeover. We have no tickets left. Zero tickets left. Yeah, yeah, how do you feel about that? How does that make you feel on the inside? <laughs> it honestly gave me butterflies. Like, <laughs> like last year we we started. We had a smaller. We've said this before. We would do post games, and we had one person with us. Yeah, I think it was just then, Dev. And then it'd go from one to zero, <laughs> and then back to one. And now when we do post games, they have twenty people with us watching live right after a game. Uh, you guys are going up to Dwayne and Mitch. Hey, what's up? The other day at the gym, some guy came up to me and he's like, are you Yaya? I got scared because I thought I messed up. Dude was jacked. I was like, I don't want to fight, dude. I'm sorry. Like, I, whatever I did, I did it. Take my wife. Like, <laughs> like, I'm, like I'm not fighting you. I'm sorry. But it, then, like, figuring, uh, finding out we sold out the tailgate was just really cool. It, it, like, it gives me butterflies. See how far we've gone. Like, and it just, it also, around the company, everybody sees how far we've come. And they're willing to invest more in us. They're talking about how good we did. And it makes me feel good. It just it's cool accomplishing something so big like that. Dwayne, how do you feel about it? Terrible? Yes. Do you hate that we sold out the tailgate? Awful. I'm wow. so bummed. Everyone's gonna Everyone be enjoying Dwayne in the chat. Please, uh. no one come <laughs> hang out and have lots of fun. Wink, wink, uh, nudge, nudge. I'm excited to be handing out these scarves, dude. Oh, uh, dude, it's gonna be so fun. Some up the pits, dude? It's gonna be perfect for that little Little DNVR up the pit scarf slash hoodie weather towards the end of the match. Give me, dude. It's, it's going to be, be cool when, they, when everybody puts out the scarf and then we have a little section of just DNVR scarves going up. That's, yeah. that's going to be, that's the part where I like, that I'm like, that's going to be really sure dope. that we get Ryan Green down in the right spot to get a picture of that. I'm going to show Ryan Green a real good spot. Yeah. Taking oh you to the cleaner, uh, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but again, going um, back to the home field advantage. Again, sure, sure, sure. I, I just got excited. Yeah, it's, no, it's, 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 it's true. Like it's gonna be nice, and it does kind of play in. 
let's be honest. We're going to be completely honest. Rapids don't sell out every game. Nope. They struggle with attendance. Yep. Uh, part of it's because the stadium's not as big. But yep. the other part of it's that they, don't, they just don't sell out. But the fans that do go make it really hard for players. The amount of times I've gone and just heard profanities being yelled at the other <laughs> team. And they're professional athletes, whatever. They're, supposed, they're used to it. It still gets in their head. When you start talking about their mama and how their mama can't cook, like it does, like <laughs> part of them's like, damn, these Your dudes are, like cook. these dudes are a holes, like it's cold man. Yeah, and like it gets, like it, like you're out there sweating, and then you hear people yelling at you, and you're trying to right. focus on where the ball's going. They're professional athletes; they're used to it. They're pretty good at blocking it out for the most part, but there are times that that the fans do get with them, especially when that stadium is rocking, like that uh, Thanksgiving game. It becomes such a great atmosphere. And that really helps the Rapids become a great home team. If they're a great home team this year versus just a good home team, which I think probably the more likely scenario is just like good home team, yeah. above average to good. But if they're great, I'm not even worried about playing. They could steal that seventh spot. I think they could even steal the fifth spot. Oh my God. We're Holy sipping smokes. the juice, baby. One dry at yeah, Austin. Is One like dry at Austin, baby. And we're gas stop. The thing that. <laughs> Well, okay, Dwayne. What, you, what you've been to so many games. You've been you've been to so many Rapids games here at home. When you feel that rumbly, rumbly, rumbly crowd just starting to pick up steam, kind of just going. Don't you get juiced? Don't you start thinking? Well, yeah, I mean, don't you just start, Part of me is like, bring well, on Barca. Not bring there on what you're like, calling fifth place. We haven't won a game. <laughs> Let's go. I just it's love a, it. That's Yasalina. Yo, I'm, we I'm need down. that. I'm, I'm so turned up I'm for this for weekend. I want you to bring that on Saturday. No team is 100%. No team. And But when I say that, I mean the Rapids are good. I'm not predicting a fifth place. St. Louis is 100% right now. But they're not. <laughs> the thing at the end of the year, no team is going to win every game. That was game. for Mitch. There's still 87, right. 87 points at play. Sure. 87. You need 43 to get into that ninth spot, which gives you uh, that on average. The last three years is about 43 points. That means you need 10 wins around there, give or take, with a few draws sprinkled in there. Probably like 11 or 12. 11 or 12 yeah. with some draws sprinkled in there. Yeah, it's totally not. I mean, it isn't impossible, but. You get how many games at home? You get six, uh, 17, 17. 17 games at home. So 15 more if you include this weekend? Exactly. So you got uh, 15 more. If you win 10 of the, 10 of the 15. And you draw you're in other a good three. Spot. You're in a good spot for ninth place. So you're you have to like, be better on the road than you were last year and so far this year. Exactly. Yeah. But the thing is that if the team improves enough to be good at home, there's a chance they could be decent away. That yeah. can propel them into that. Because you got to remember, nine, ten through five, it's very competitive. There's only maybe at most five, six points separating oh, these for clubs. Sure. So a few draws your way, a few results of that go, go your way on the road. There's a good chance that they get into that fifth playoff spot. And I'm not I'm not banking on it. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I'm not Rapids are going for that fifth, but it's also not out of this world to get that fifth or yeah. get up there and higher up than the Yeah, nine. and the bottom half tends to cannibalize itself in the MLS. You know, I mean the the great thing, I mean, I know there's articles about it, you know, earlier in the year about whether there should be this much parity in MLS or there should not, and it should be more like Premier League where the same six teams always win. And just for those of you who don't know, I'm firmly against that. Um, I, don't I mind love, it. yeah. Well, <laughs> you're a man, you fan. So <laughs> that's right. Everything breaks Greatest your way. Of the world. Um, you know, I love. <laughs> I, I think that's what makes MLS like unique and special and and yes. fun to watch. Is because every team has a chance, you know. And certainly when you're looking at those bottom spots, like you're saying, Yaya, is that the teams end up having to play each other and they cannibalize those points, you know? And so it's like nobody can move up a whole bunch because everyone's beating up on each other. Until and it's start, awesome. Until you, know? you start getting these upsets. Like, not I don't know if they're upsets when, when it's a home game for the Rapids, right? But, like, you do pull – if you pull three points from L.A. total on the Everything season, is an upset right now. Sure, that's fair. Yeah. That's actually and a that's really okay. good point. Like, Literally, that's, it's that's all That's not upsets. me dunking or no, anything. No, you're right. Like you're right. You're right. Yeah, that's just, that's just how it is. And Well, you know, it's good. That's awesome. I mean, good and bad. I think you could go two different ways with this, good and bad. We say they're a great home team. They need to figure it out on the road. You still have multiple instances of road of multiple road games before we get to our first instance of multiple home games in a row. Yeah. That, that doesn't I, happen until May. 
that that is a very dumb schedule, by the way. It's a tough schedule, but this yeah. team, if they want to prove that that is off their back from last year, where it took until mid August, early August, to get a road win. Mid August was it what fourteenth or something? Yeah, around there. Yeah. Yeah. So mid August of last year, before they got their first three points on the road, should have had that one that they blew it against Houston. Whatever, whatever. Not going to get into that. But a lot of chances to to, to beat that record. And again, sure. you get a win. Let's say you, let's just say you get a win this weekend. I mean, like also a, total hypothetical. Oh, this weekend. Okay. Yeah, this weekend. Total hypothetical. You get you're up to five points. A few results go your way. You could be nipping you're right at, at the, Casey you, and at Charlotte after that. Exactly. Like you're those nipping are winnable. At the, like you're totally nipping. You're gonna games. draw on those, and then you come back into a homestand, and then you start kind of fighting for Not those points stand. again. <laughs> again, another. You get one, one game at home one. against St. Louis. So then stupid. you go to Vancouver, to Galaxy, home to Philly, at Atlanta, home to Salt Lake. I hate yeah, my life so much. Home to Cincy. It's a tough stretch. We got a rough stretch. So I mean, I think we tough. You know, but you I, have these three games. Steal a point minimum from LA. Try and get four from Casey and Charlotte on the road. I think, yeah. At this point, all you have to do is um, pray, I guess. Pray. <laughs> but, Hope, <laughs> but, hope, and a prayer, baby. No, at, th- at this point, it just you take each. Literally, it's such a cliche, but take one game at a time. Take one one minute of the one half at a time. Take it in ten minute te- uh, segments. Jared Benner of the Avalanche has this great thing where he's like, play five minutes of the game every right. five minutes. Just win the next five, Breathe win the next out. five, yeah. win the next five. You play that way, you play any game that way, you do anything in life that way, you just focus on those next five, and you're going to be golden because you're not going to be looking ahead just five minutes at a time because that's all you can do right now. When you're out there, play the game, breathe, relax, and don't look ahead too much. It's our job to look ahead, right. but as players, you guys should just look at what you're doing and try, try to see if you can win the next five minutes. That's all you need. I think it's... That's the perfect message for the players. I think in a similar vein, but to Frazier is if the whole thing is, oh, we don't know who to play. Like, try everybody. Try right? the whole hand. Like, leave See the guy that are hot. Have. Like, yeah. Not, yeah. See what works. If someone's not working, throw Cabral a start. Get Galvan yeah. some, some longer minutes. Right? Like, try stuff. Get Kada, get Abubakar Kada back in that rotation if he needs to be. Right? Like, try some stuff. See what works. Because right now you're bottom of the table. Yeah, no it does not get man, worse. For it. Try everything. You have, you know, you have a big opportunity, a big first nice weather home game this weekend against the champs. Do what you can, and then two. I don't. Nothing is easy, but as easy as you're going to get road games yeah. after that. So, yep. hopefully, this is the start of a little something, right? I think Saturday was the start of what could be something, but can you continue that? We'll see. Prediction time, then we get out of here. Uh, real quick, um, just I want to bring up something Rubio told sure, me. Of course. Uh, I talked to Rubio a couple weeks back, and he was telling me that um, I asked him, he's like, do you think these next matchups matter? And he looked at me and just said, hey, you know what? Every matchup matters because every team got better. The, the records don't mean anything. Right. Every team got better, and you got to go out there and fight every team. There's no easy wins in the MLS. There's no bad wins in the MLS. There's only wins. And I'm like, Okay. So you're aware that every team got better, and you're aware that you got to go out there and fight. I love that. Like, go for it. Dope. I just thought that was, like, perfect for this. Yeah, for sure. So prediction time? Prediction time. Dwayne, you're up first. Oh, geez. Um, Let's try stuff. uh, Let's try stuff. stuff. Put it on my tombstone, baby. (laughs) Let's go. Put it on my tombstone. Me to my wife and our honeymoon. Let's try (laughs) try stuff. Why not? (laughs) Let's try stuff. Wow, yeah, like hey. going to that new restaurant we haven't been to. <laughs> Coach Carroll, everybody. Hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, who? throw it at the wall until something <laughs> sticks. All right. All right, Dwayne, you're up. Prediction time. Um, man, I, I have no reason <laughs> for this prediction other than screw it. Why not? Um, let's go 3-2 Rapids. Whoa! Okay. Let's, let's take Minch up on the three goals needed to win. I think Three it's two. I think it's two two draw. Wow, super yeah, yeah. My thought process is two ways: either they score early and win one zero, or they score early and they win two zero because the last one is a fluke. Right. Um, but I'm gonna say yeah, it's, it's gonna be a one one draw. One one draw. 
So I think that's... I'll take a point this weekend. I don't... I, one my point sounds great. My prediction is that so. most of Rapids Twitter is going to say something like 3-1 LAFC. Yes, correct. That's my I, prediction. Yeah, I'm that. trying to be positive here because my real prediction is 2-1 or 2-0. But I think 1-1 yeah. draw is a feasible mm. goal. I'm just hoping. I'm, you know, I'm I just want to see Rubio chaos, score. man. Just let me get some Rubio action. Let Yappy get his first goal. You know what I would have loved? I'd, I'd, I'm gonna take the lid off the offense. You know what I want? I really, really want. What? You know when a uh, Moach gets a tech? I want Frazier to get a yellow. I want Frazier to get a red dog. Fraser I know we need Frazier on the bench. All right, you're right. I want I want equipment manager to get another red dog. Let's go. <laughs> I want Frazier. I really want Frazier with the yellow. Show some. He showed it yeah, in Austin. Yeah, let's talk about it. He, oh, he was it. angry yeah. last week. I he was fired up. Yeah, I wanted to be out there and just be like. I don't know who noted it. Maybe it was Plone or somebody, but he was hyped as the players came off, off that yeah, half. It was Plone. Yeah. It was Plone. Yeah, he was Plone. fired up. I think Frazier has found something with this team. Does that lead to points this weekend? We'll see. We'll see. Also, his, his, I don't know if you guys saw it on Rapids Twitter, like that he, they, you know how coach gets his. Video after a game, he got one of those too. Right after the game, they filmed him talking to the team. His message was great. Was it's only a draw? It's a great draw. Now we build on this. Let's go. Let's so build I on think it. Let's I, try stuff. He has something in him. Let's try stuff. What's going on my tombstone? I swear to God. <laughs> Get it tatted on your. It could be my last words. Could just be my life motto. <laughs> Who's to say? Mitch. Uh, <laughs> Mitch is declaring he will get a tramp stamp. That says me let's and, try stuff. Me in Vegas. So, let's try stuff. In case he goes missing, we can identify him. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, guys, thanks so much for chilling with us tonight. You guys want to plug anything? Uh, I want to plug a couple of things. Uh, we've been kicking around the idea of a kick around. Oh playing. yeah. I can't believe we didn't bring up yeah, the kick around. So I wanted to leave it for the last segment. <laughs> it's important. But, uh, maybe once every month, uh, twice, uh, once every couple of weeks, we want to get together on a Saturday morning, Sunday morning and have a little five on five, 11 on 11 indoor soccer, outdoor, whatever works for everybody. Just play some soccer, have fun. If you guys are interested, let us know. What's uh, the park? Uh, not decided. I was thinking Garfield Park because it has Love indoor it. Garfield because it has indoor uh, outdoor soccer cartoon. fields, which is really fun, and you don't need any equipment. We would president also so love that cartoon. Uh, let Mondays. us know if you guys. Yeah, let us know if you guys are <laughs> interested. Thumbs up. <laughs> let us just tweet at us. Let us know if you guys are interested in doing something like that with us. I think it'd be really fun. And you can tweet at us at uh, DNVR underscore Rapids. That'd be the best place to get in contact with us if you guys are interested. Yeah. So that also, is correct. Uh, give us a f- five star review. And wherever you listen to us, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all, please. And uh, besides that, give us a like. Love that. I agree with all of it. Uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. Get your DNVR Die Hard membership at the DNVR.com. That gets you a free shirt and Die Hard box when you sign up. A free shirt every year when you renew. 20% off in the locker. Into the Discord. 15% off at the bar. All the written content behind the paywall. Am I missing anything? Madden League. Maybe a FIFA league coming up. We'll yeah, talk. Yeah, that's something um, we've been kicking around too. <laughs> uh, discounts to parties, tailgates, buses, everything we do out of here. It's definitely worth the investment. Who um, knows? Maybe one of those off weeks, we might even do a little FIFA tournament at the bar. Ooh. Take over one of the TVs and love that. Go ham. Love that. All right, guys. Thanks for running with us. But more important than everything we just told you, the way we ended every time, drop them in the chat if you can. Up the pits. <laughs>